it is in the end. Uh, let's go find out. Ready enough, here I come. Whoa. I was born to be on the run. Shine forever wild and young. Unbelievable. Bright as gold, eclipse the sun. This is what it you is. do for a living? Ready or not. If all women who have been sexually harassed or assaulted wrote Me Too, we might give people a sense of magnitude of the problem. If someone is putting you in a situation you don't want to be in, no means no, and no is all you have to say. Too many times has gunfire been ringing out in the hallways of schools across this country. I got so lucky today, lucky to be alive. I know that when stuff like this happens, you realize there are a lot more good people wanting to do good things than horrible people wanting to do horrid things. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Neil Mohan. Hi everybody, it's great to be here. Over the last 13 years, YouTube has grown from an ambitious idea into a worldwide movement built on free expression and the power of openness. At YouTube, we've witnessed and experienced the amazing things an open platform can create. It gets better, the Arab Spring, me too. It's clear YouTube is not just a reflection of our world, it's a vibrant community where everyone has a voice, and those voices spur action and bring about positive change. And our impact is only growing. In fact, today we're announcing another milestone. The number of logged in users coming to YouTube every month is now up to 1.9 billion. With that impressive level of use and localized versions of YouTube stretching across 90 countries and 80 languages, we're opening up the world to anyone with a cell phone and an internet connection. And YouTube Go, our app for the next billion users, is now available in over 140 countries around the world. That's a powerful thing, and it comes with great responsibility. As chief product officer, I believe a responsible YouTube is a YouTube that continues to embrace openness, while ensuring our impact from individual users to entire countries and across the globe is a positive one. To accomplish that, we're not just changing the way that we do things, we're changing the way that we think about the work we do. In the past year, we've undertaken efforts to eliminate spammers, impersonators, and other bad actors seeking to take advantage of our open platform. And we've put the spotlight on digital well-being, giving users the tools to help them manage their time and experience on YouTube. For example, we're empowering users to combine all of their daily push notifications into a single combined notification. And we're introducing another tool that allows people to silence notification sounds and vibrations at specific times of the day. I know from personal experience that that can come in extremely handy when you're trying to get some sleep. And this is something that we're gonna remain focused on. We're doing this not because it's right for our business, but because it's the right thing to do. This belief informs every decision we make, from the policies we enact to the products we ship. And it's these products that help foster free expression and deliver on the promise of our collective community. Let's take a look. Hello, and welcome to my new channel. I am recording something funny. Uh, yes. What motivated me to start making videos? I just wanted to reach out, to connect to spread a positive message and to help people. All these new ways we can create, that's what keeps me going.
I mean, I can invent new worlds. My fans can sing along with me, even in the middle of nowhere. I can dance how I want, knowing it will play how I want. It's like a megaphone for our voice. Something we make could just totally blow up. When I'm jumping, we're all jumping. When I'm laughing, we're all laughing. <laughs> My fans help me put more of myself out there. It's amazing how far you can go with a strong community behind you. Thank you. Over the years, creators have found the opportunity to earn a living doing what they love on YouTube. Their passion and their fans have built a completely new global economy that's seeing incredible growth. The number of creators earning five figures a year is up 35%, and the number of creators earning six figures is up 40%. As in previous years, most of the money going into our creators' pockets is coming from our advertising partners. But we're thinking bigger. We believe creators should have more ways and more opportunities to make more money. Nearly three years ago, we launched YouTube Originals to bring a new source of revenue to creators. And so far, that content has been viewed over a quarter of a billion times. More often than not, those viewers are watching creators who got their start on YouTube. Well over two-thirds of our originals star YouTubers, both in front of and behind the cameras. Joey Grisefa's Escape the Night is going into its third season. Today, Joey and the cast took stage here for a screening and panel discussion to discuss the most ambitious season to date. Foursome, starring Jen McAllister, is now heading into season four, and it's been a huge success. Views increased 50% between seasons one and seasons two. And success on an original can also mean more success on a creator's own channel. Some creators have seen as much as a 20% increase in channel viewership after their originals launched. You know, it used to be that online video creators aspired to make it big on TV. Today, these same creators, together with traditional celebrities, aspire to make it big in online video. That's a massive cultural shift. And we are proud to provide an open platform that helps so many people express and share so much powerful and seismic creativity. But we haven't stopped at subscrip subscriptions. The unique bond between creators and their fans is what makes YouTube so special. That bond is the foundation of some great new products I'm really excited to share with you today. These tools are especially appealing in that they not only help creators better engage with their communities, they enable them to make money while doing it. This is an idea that began last year with Super Chat, a product that allows fans to purchase messages that stand out within a live chat. We've seen tremendous success with this product. In fact, over 65% of the channels that use Super Chat more than doubled their income during their live streams. Another innovative product that we've been testing is called Channel Memberships. Channel Memberships is a really cool feature that allows fans to pay a small monthly fee to their favorite creators to get unique badges, new emojis, and access to special perks, such as exclusive live streams, extra videos, or shout outs. Channel Memberships has already been available to a select group of creators under the name Sponsorships. And we're seeing some awesome revenue numbers for the creators test driving this new product. Using channel memberships, comedy creator Mike Falzone, for example, more than tripled his YouTube revenue. Canadian food and travel vloggers Simon and Martina were able to earn 1,000 new memberships from fans across 30 different countries in just 10 days. 
With the direct support of their tight-knit global community, they've been able to revamp their mini-series, Eat Your Sushi, which they now share exclusively with their channel members. Based on the success we've already seen, I'm excited to announce today that we're expanding channel memberships. In the coming weeks, we'll begin to gradually release it to eligible channels with more than 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. And we hope to bring it to even more creators in the coming months. From shirts to mugs to plush spiders, merchandise has been a part of many creators' businesses for a very long time. With that in mind, we've been working to make it even easier for more creators to sell merch directly from their channels. So we built a really cool new shelf that allows them to do just that. And, they, and to make the process even simpler, we've teamed with Teespring to help creators make custom merch. This is another product where in testing, we've seen creators generate impressive amounts of revenue outside of ads. Creator Joshua Slice, the gifted animator behind Lucas the Spider, recently used our merch shelf to help sell 60,000 Lucas the Spider plushies, according to Teespring. That's more than $1 million worth of product. And he did it in just 18 days. We want to see what else creators can do with merch. So today we're making YouTube merch available to all US eligible creators who have more than 10,000 subscribers. All right. With live concerts becoming a bigger driver of revenue for musicians and artists, we want to help performers and touring creators on YouTube reach those fans to keep them updated about upcoming shows and sell more tickets. Earlier this year, you may recall, we began featuring hundreds of artists' upcoming US tour dates on their YouTube videos. Fans enjoying an artist's official music video on YouTube can now learn about upcoming concert listings in their area, and with a simple click, go to Ticketmaster to purchase those tickets. Another new creator pro revenue product I'm really excited about is FameBit. As many of you may know, we acquired FameBit. All right, there's FameBitters in the crowd. As many of you know, we acquired FameBit back in, uh, in 2016. It's a really innovative platform that brings creators and brands together to form unique mar marketing partnerships. For advertisers, it's great because they know what to expect from the creators that they choose to partner with. We're also adding new tools to make it easier for brands to measure the success of these partnerships. And for creators, FameBit is great because it allows them to monetize with brands while staying true to their individual style and voice. This is yet another product that is generating new and significant revenue for our creators. In fact, over half the channels that used FameBit in the first three months of 2018 doubled their YouTube revenue. And we're continuing to build on this early success of FameBit. In the coming months, we'll be launching a feature that will allow users to shop for products directly from the Creator Watch page. It includes a shelf that will allow users to easily buy products, tickets, apps, and other things that are being shared in that particular video. And now I'd like to bring up a creator who knows a little something about brand partnerships. You may have seen his great work in things for, with Coca-Cola, Sprint, NBC, and a host of other brands that he's partnered with. Let's check it out. What's up guys, this is Kurt, and today we are filming our video. Oh my god, it looks amazing. Kurt's mind is on another planet. What up guys? My name is Kirk Hugo Schneider. I make music, I make videos, I play a bunch of instruments. I upload it on YouTube and I hope some of you like it. I started my YouTube journey back when I was in college. In my dorm room, I was probably spending too much time making music and making videos than I was studying. But the first time I uploaded a video on YouTube, a week later, I had a thousand views on it which to me as a college student at the time, I was so excited and I spent that year uploading consistently on the platform and after a year of uploading YouTube videos, I had built up 3,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel, which of course now sounds like just a drop in the bucket, but to me that was so encouraging and that year 
I had my first viral video. I made this mashup of all of Michael Jackson's hits and I turned it into this acapella 20 song piece all in three minutes and it got shared around and about a year later, my channel had 300,000 subscribers. And when I graduated, I figured, you know, I would try to make a business out of this YouTube thing. I would take a year and I was just going to try to make YouTube work and uh, I, I still haven't got a real job. So I think something has, has gone okay. And nowadays, such an important part of my ability and creators' abilities to make a business out of their YouTube channel is brands. And that's what I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about today. Creators working with brands, what works well, what's worked well for me, and what I think are some best practices. I created my first brand video almost six years ago now with Sprint. And something, when, when I was creating it, I was thinking about what do I want a brand partnership to look like with my channel? I didn't want to just make a music video and have someone hold up a phone and it's a Sprint. Or to someone drink a bottle and you read Coca-Cola. Uh, I, I wanted to integrate brands into my channel in an authentic way that worked with what I was doing making music, but also worked with the brand's goals as well. Um, one of the most successful videos I feel like I've done with brands was uh, my Coca-Cola project, the first video I, I made with them. I pitched the idea of let me make music using just Coke bottles. Let me fill up different glasses with Coke. Let me blow over bottles that are filled to different levels. Let, let me use, use the plastic bottles as, as shakers. And we created a, basically a Coke bottle symphony. And every single frame of the video has Coca-Cola in it. And yet it doesn't feel like I'm selling out. It doesn't feel like I, I'm doing something inauthentic because it works with what naturally happens on my channel, which is making cool music. And at the same time, the brand is the hero of the video. So the brand message is, is achieved because the, the video would not work without Coca-Cola. And similarly with some other projects that I've done, I did a project recently with M&Ms where uh, I was struggling when they came to me to think of how am I gonna make M&Ms work in the, pro, in, in, in the conceit of, of music, in, in, in to make it fit with what I do as a creator. And I came up with the idea of, of course, I would never use a, a concept like, oh, let's make a music video and have people eat M&Ms. That's exactly what I think doesn't work well on the platform. That's what I call hand-holding. Basically, when you, you hold the product in your hand and that's the extent of the integration. I need to bring M&Ms into my world and make it work with me. So what I did was I created this large wooden contraption of all these chutes and ladders and, and each chute had M&Ms that were lined up. And I, I played this contraption by basically triggering when M&Ms would fall down all the various chutes. And when, based on the chute it was going down, once the M&M would get to the end, it would either hit a drum pad or a tambourine or it would hit a xylophone note here or, or a, a, another note on, on a keyboard here. And together, the combination of all these M's, m ms going down in, in, in just the right way made a song. And once again, the m ms are the hero of the video. The, the video wouldn't be cool without the brand, without the m ms They're in almost the entire video, and yet it doesn't feel like selling out. In fact, I think it's one of the coolest videos I've done. I'm very proud of it. Um, and I, I think that's something that I always take to heart with brands, is making the brand the hero, doing something in a cool and innovative way, and making it work with what I do already as a creator. Now that YouTube has acquired FameBit, there's so many more opportunities for both brands and creators alike. I'm so excited to see what's to come. I had the pleasure of working with FameBit and collaborating with them and NBC and The Voice to make a video that I, I think is super cool. And now I'm so excited to see all the ways that influencers will work with brands and FameBit and use this new technology to make something truly incredible. So excited to see what's to come. Thank you so much for having me, BitCon. Thank you, Kurt, that was great. Congrats, congrats on all the success. Um, it's great to hear how FameBit's been working for you and the advice that you gave, I think, was, was really spot on. 
Uh, as I said before, community is at the very heart of YouTube. And it's this engagement with their fans that is the most common thread shared by our most successful creators on the platform. We're working on new ways to help creators strengthen those unique bonds between themselves and their fans. But the truth is that creators know how to build communities better than any of us. And that's why we've been working alongside them to build new tools to help them connect and reach their audience in different ways. Together, we're, we've experienced the biggest music, sports, science, culture, and gaming events unfold live on YouTube in the past year. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket completed its first test and became the second largest live stream, stream ever uh, in YouTube's history, drawing more than 2.3 million concurrent viewers. A gaming creator hosted the single largest live stream uh, in history with over 1.1 million people watching Fortnite's Battle Royale concurrently. This year's UEFA Champions League final was YouTube's largest ever sports live stream with over 1.3 million people watching it at the same time. And people from all over the world tuned in to watch the wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, which racked up over 11 million live views. And we continue to build tools to help creators find success interacting with their communities in real time with YouTube Live. We've added new features that now make it even easier to go live, including things like simple webcam streaming from your computer, and of course, mobile live. Well, today, I'm excited to launch a new tool we're building to boost engagement and take creators' flair for the dramatic to the next level. With premieres, creators will be able to debut pre-recorded videos as a live moment. When they choose to release a premiere, we will automatically create a public landing page to build anticipation and hype up that new content. And when fans show up to watch that premiere of a new video, they'll be able to communicate in real time with each other and with the creator. It'll be like the entire audience around the globe for that creator and that video is in one single theater together. We're thrilled to start rolling out premieres with a few new creators today. Among this group is Jack Films, who used to do a version of premieres himself in the past. Jack would upload a live countdown to build hype around a video he was about to debut. This is exactly what premieres will enable, and we can't wait to see what creators are gonna do with it. We're also working to help creators use lightweight content creation to engage with fans between video uploads. Last year at VidCon, we announced that we would make big improvements to how vertical video is displayed on YouTube. We've delivered on that promise, and we're continuing to build on that effort. With that in mind, I'm really excited to announce that we've started experimenting with our own take on stories designed specifically for YouTube creators. With YouTube stories, creators can make quick, lightweight videos on the go. No editing, no hassles, no post-production needed. And we're also bringing creator-focused features like linking to YouTube videos from stories, youtube -y stickers, and more. And we've got some more news. Later this year, we're expanding stories to all eligible creators with more than 10,000 subscribers. But the centerpiece of our effort to grow community is our Community tab. Community tab posts are a one-stop shop for growing and engaging with fans. Visible across the platform, these posts let creators move beyond just video to build even deeper connections with their fans and audiences through GIFs, pics, polls, and text. The stuff we're seeing, do, we're seeing creators do is really cool. Hannah Stocking, for example, shares pictures of what she's been up to that week and cross-promotes her appearances on other channels. Sam Sui has been using community posts since launch to share pictures, promote his tours, and poll his fans to see which music video he should make next. And fans are loving these community tools. Over 60 million users click into or engage with community posts every single day. And now I'd like to bring out a creator who in the process of posting videos to raise awareness around eating disorders and mental health has built an amazing, vibrant global community on YouTube. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, my name is Katie Morton and I'm a licensed therapist. Today we're talking about PTSD. Five ways to know that you need to get back in therapy. 
depression is something that we can fight through and we can win. There are people out there to help. You are not alone. If you have any questions or anything that you need answered, ask them and I will be doing Q&As. Bye. Back in 2011, I was right where I wanted to be professionally. I had my master's degree in clinical psychology, and I had a rewarding career as a licensed marriage and family therapist. And I was helping patients who were suffering from eating disorders. But almost every day, I was coming home from work so frustrated. My colleagues and I at the clinic could only see so many patients each and every day, so we'd need to refer people out to other treatment options. But unfortunately, there weren't a lot of options out there. And it was tough to find therapists who truly understood eating disorders and its treatment. Many say they do, but don't. So I felt helpless watching people battle this heinous disease without the resources and support that they truly needed. I didn't know what to do. And then one day after venting to my husband, as one does, he told me about YouTube and the really cool things that creators were doing on there. He suggested that I use it to help raise awareness and to educate people about eating disorders. At first, I was very hesitant. <laughs> Therapists aren't really known for putting themselves out there for the world to see. In fact, we're actually taught to do the complete opposite. But I thought to myself, if I can positively affect just one person, it would all be worth it. So we set up a camera. We hung a sheet for some reason, and we filmed our first video. Of course, it was super awkward, and it got three views. Me, my husband, and my mom, of course. But we kept at it, and I began to see it as another extension of what I was already doing in my practice. And it went way beyond just eating disorders. I create, created content to help people better understand themselves and their situation. And as my view counts grew, something amazing and completely unexpected began to happen. People who'd already been coming to my videos began answering questions that were posted by newcomers. They would point other users to a video that I'd already made on a particular subject. And they would share their own stories. I was even seeing students studying to become therapists and social workers creating what was virtually like an online study group around my videos. I realized at that point that it wasn't just my channel anymore. It was our communities. And this community is everything to me. And I am thankful for the really great tools and resources that YouTube provides that allow me to foster and grow it. First, there's the comment section. And if you've been a longtime viewer of my channel, you know that I spent my life in the comment section. I used to always approve each and every comment that came through in order to keep it a safe place. Now, thanks to YouTube, I can appoint moderators. That was amazing. As someone with such limited time between seeing patients and producing videos, that was an, a huge help. I can't even tell you. Thank you. Um, and I love the new community tab that Neil mentioned. It's just another really great tool that allows me to engage more with my community. The polls allow me to get invaluable feedback, like where my viewers are from, what content they find helpful, and what they want to see more of. And the community tab also allows us to have a little fun, too. Mental health can be fun, I promise. And I love that I can post images, graphics, and GIFs or GIFs, however you want to say it now. And I get such a lift from the response from those, because they're actually pretty funny. Overall, it's really upped the engagement level on my channel. And it's helping me build a stronger, more tight-knit global community focused on mental health. My community is what keeps me going. And they don't know this, but one of the ways they do that is through the messages and the letters that I receive from them telling me they finally reached out for help, and it was in part due to me. And I want to share a part of one of those letters here today. It came to me from a young deaf ballet dancer in the UK, and she was struggling with anorexia. And it reads, the something I want you to know is that I'm so grateful for you. I cannot hear but your videos have subtitles, and I've learned so much. Communication is sometimes so hard for me. You've communicated that there's hope and help out there. I never even considered that it might get better. 
I never considered that there might be a life after anorexia. Because of you and your videos, I got help. I remember watching one of your videos, sorry, in the morning of my doctor's appointment. It gave me the courage to go to that appointment. I got sent straight to the hospital and was admitted within two hours. I've been told that if I hadn't gone that day, I would be dead now. You are part of the reason that I'm alive today. Even as I sit with a tube in my nose, writing a letter to you to distract myself from exercise, I feel nothing but gratitude for your channel and what you're trying to do. And I think back to when I started my channel, how I told myself if I could just help one person, it would all be worth it. Now, with the help of my community, I'm able to help thousands of people across the globe, from the United States to the UK to Cyprus and beyond. What a powerful force for good. And thank you to YouTube. And thank you to all the creators and the communities out there helping make the world a better place, even if you have to do it just one person at a time. Thank you. Good morning, Chris. Great to see you in space, as always. Here's our first question. Hi, Commander Hatfield. How might I become an astronaut? Uh, that's a good question. How can you become an astronaut? Really, how can you become anything? Hey, everybody. Today I'm going to teach you fashion sketching. Pirouette. CPR. Let's go. Namaskar. Number one is decide what you might want to be. Today begins day one. One and a half. Two. Oh, this is awesome. It should be something that's really exciting to you. Something that you really want to do. And then start turning yourself into that person. It doesn't happen just like that. It takes a lot of years. But every single decision you make turns you a little bit into the person you're going to be tomorrow. And the day after that. And the day after that. The decisions you make every day turn you into who you're going to be tomorrow. At YouTube, we believe everyone should have easy, open access to information. And we believe that video is a powerful force for education, building understanding, and documenting world events, big and small. But despite all of the connections that are happening within the YouTube community, I'd be remiss if I didn't also acknowledge the growing divisions that are happening around the world. Every day there seems to be something new that divides us. Politics, global affairs, elections, these are all reminders of what makes us different, what divides us. But there's so much more to humanity. Considering all of that strife and craziness, YouTube creators are doing something pretty incredible. They're cutting through the noise. Like Katie touched on with her amazing, inspiring remarks, they're creating the communities they want to be a part of. And they're changing the world for the better. That's the power of openness. That's the power of community. That's the power of YouTube. Thank you.